Who are we? Nobodies. Speak for yourself. Okay. We're Canadian filmmakers with the dream of surviving financially on the backs of our films. Welcome to our show where we bring people along on our film journey. Maybe, maybe we can learn a thing or two. Maybe we can teach people a thing or two while drinking beers. I mean, if you can't drink beers while filmmaking, what's the point? We are Fable Forest Films, failing our way to success. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I mean, our show. First frames first. So I went on to Stitcher and I just searched filmmaking podcasts just to see what was out there. And, and we were... We were not there. Um... And so I just looked at our dis- the description of our podcast, and all it says is, Welcome to the Fable Forest. Right. So we just need to say one word. And we can say it here, just in the show, and yeah. then it will be good. Will it? I don't know. Will no. it? No. We have to log into Stitcher and do something? Yes. Stitcher technical support. That's right. Welcome to episode 33, I think. Tree tree. There you go. Uh, of our filmmaking journey. Um, we have a, a, a special guest star on our show today. Before we get into it, though, um, we haven't had this guy on our show yet, but mm-hmm. we have talked about him a bunch of times. Hold on, i got to start the timer. Otherwise, this might be a three-hour show. Very bad. <clears throat> We've talked about him a bunch of times because he's kind of responsible. Uh, I mean, we're not going to give him all the money or credit or anything, but he's kind of responsible for... Uh, everything that's uh, been going on in the last bunch of years yeah. in that we met during his directorial debut, let's that's say. That's right. And he has been involved with me, certainly right from the beginning. Right. From the since, very first, since, since I arrived, I arrived in Kitchener-Waterloo mm-hmm. and started shooting here in Kitchener-Waterloo. This guy has been it's like a fucking barnacle. So, <laughs> <laughs> in that he's very difficult to scrape off the bottom of your boat. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so we're gonna get into kind of the origin story and yeah. um, and uh, uh, how we how we all met and then what's been going on and we will of course touch on how we're doing with uh, the Art of Eight Limbs, which mm-hmm. is our Muay Thai doc- documentary, and we'll get into quick updates on Shifted, our feature horror film, um, and then any other quick updates that we've got, and yeah. then we'll, we'll move on. So without further ado. Without wow. further ado, further. without further ado, without further ado, let me introduce cinematographer and DOP extraordinaire and gear hog, Michael Melko. Welcome, wel- welcome, you. welcome to the show, Michael Malko. Thank you. Was it weird just standing off to the side there while we called your names? Uh, a little. The be- a little. I think the best part is that. The GoPro might be so wide that it saw him the whole time. <laughs> and he was just standing there. Good. Just staring at all the movies. Just looking awkward. Yeah. Yeah, my office is a mess. Michael? Yes. Just talking to your microphone. Hello. 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 All the, He's all got the such sexy a soft people. little voice. Because oh. I'm nervous as fuck. Oh. Like I can swear, right? Is yes, you can. Okay. Oh, man. So, so um, as I was pulling up to your house. <laughs> good Lord. He's the guy that's in charge of all the gear and equipment. Are you going to be able to... <clears throat> Hold on. There you go. So as you pulled up to my house... I see I see this... Uh... Hold that's, on. We're that's for you, big for boy. You. Um, I see this uh, orange car. God, it's, it's so gross. It's quite orange. It's so disgusting. God, whose car is that anyway? It looks terrible. Psh. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know the colors. The colors are great. <laughs> so tell us about your new car, Mike. It's new. It is new. It is new. Why did you get it? Uh, because Carly, my other car, was... <laughs> your not, other car's not... name is Carly. Yeah, it was Carly. Yeah. You know, make fun. His make... new truck is named Truckly. <laughs> Truckster. Did, did you spend long nights with Carly? Yeah. No, well, thinking, thinking of that name, no. It was um, one day I was just driving... And I was trying to think of a name, and then was like, "I'm gonna call you Carly," and everyone laugh. And like I tell people, and they laugh, and then they're like, uh, that's, a, "That's a cool name. I like it." His it's new cool. truck's name is Phyllis. I think it's we're just keeping it habanero, but I did name my Bluetooth Agent Orange mm. <laughs> after Vietnam. So, <laughs> thank you for clarifying. Good, because uh, some people might not know that. Mike, tell us tell us about your 
original vehicle? Uh, Carly, yeah. uh, 2005 Chevrolet Cavalier. Um, now, you've had a, Carly a, a plethora a of problems at the end of her lifespan, but she refused to die. Those those are technically bulletproof cars, from what I've heard. Yeah, and you did you did make a short film based around your car. You loved her so much. Uh, yeah, it was a different time. Um, yeah. That means he hates his short film. That's okay. We're going to talk, we're going to talk a lot about it, but, <laughs> but, the, but the reason, this is the it, focus of this podcast. We basically told, just want to focus on the, on the short film. 100%. You, you, you switched cars <laughs> because you, uh, you wanted to have a passenger in your new car when you were also bringing gear to set. Uh, then the first time we saw your brand new car, there was absolutely no room for a passenger because you bought more gear mm -hmm. uh, and filled the truck. So it must be said that this man has a problem. No, I don't. He has, he has a problem with buying film equipment. <laughs> he can't stop doing it. Just got to have it all. More yes, you More do. lights. He buys something. More stands. And before the thing has even arrived, he's already looking at the next thing but there's which so he's going to buy. There's so many new cool things out there. Like I was just reading about um, these new LED tubes. Mm -hmm. So they're they're not they're not quasar tubes. There's something else, and it's all I've been seeing out of nowhere. Everyone has these, and they're like, they're you can run them through your app. They last about twenty hours. They're battery operated, and you just throw them up, turn them on, throw up the app, and be like, hey, I want it red. And just turn it red, and it's just. That's you, cool. It's like it's like quasar tubes minus needing the attachments, mm. like needing both ends. You need the the receiver to hook hook into a wall, and, and it just runs on batteries. It just runs on batteries. And so you can just stick to, it. You can just stick it wherever yeah, you need it. You can just gap tape it up to a wall. Or what is the last piece of equipment that you purchased? Um, big or small? What are we talking? Like we're we talking tape, or are we talking? We're not talking tape. We're talking something that is a piece of equipment, not a consumable. Um, that would be, oh, good question. Um, the last big thing I did get was my, a second 300D. Oh, yes. And that was it. That was the last one for now. That 300D was pretty great on the set of Shifted. But that was one. I yeah. only had one then and now I have two. Yeah, that was pretty great. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so happy. Me too. That you have two now. Not two now, yeah. yeah. Now, not not that. That's the best. Now. Okay. All right. So uh, these are amazing lights. Yeah. So the the thing is though, I think the marketing. I uh, actually been writing a deep dive review on it because I don't like my my biggest pet peeve about people that review gear will usually be a, just a quick thing. Be like, hey, look, I open the box. It looks great. It turns on five stars. Like, subscribe, comment, rate me, and they don't take into account all the like plus and negatives and, and actually use it in the field yeah so that, that's what you want that's what i want to do but that takes time and that takes effort you, energy you actually got to use it yeah for and a you while gotta, you gotta prove well not prove but you got to show also that this is what it would look like yeah so have you have you got the things you required i know you wanted a clip from shifted and we were just gonna and i sent you a couple photos would those do the trick for you to do your deep dive? Or? I was hoping, and I was kind of, I'm still kind of wishing that I could get some, maybe the raw, just a little bit. So so it's not so much of the color. Like if you went through and like, this is what it looks like color. That's great. Philip Bloom does that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where he's like, check out this new camera or check out whatever camera I have. It's all graded. And you're like, that looks great, but what about the raw? And he's like, okay, you can have some raw, but like as downloadables. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not everyone has the time or the patience or the energy <clears throat> to go through and so you just want to see what the rule actually looks like yeah mm -hmm. and i want to show that to be like hey this is not colored this is what you can get yeah. amazing so cool future well you're going to do your deep dive and then we're going to link to it and people are going to be amazed hopefully amazing that's hopefully mike take no a, we're not talking take, about no take us no. way back no <laughs> take us back <laughs> further no than the last the tuesday <laughs> yeah no no take us how did you what what made you want to get into gear? Did you originally want to be uh, a cameraman? Get take us way back uh, to your early film stuff, and and what did you, did you go to school? 
Tell us a little bit about your history. I, I will say that one of the things Mike used to ask me as he was as he was working out what he wanted to be exactly, because mm -hmm. you can talk exactly to your origin stories, but he would be like, you know, what should I do? Should I, you know, join? Yep. The, he was. You were looking. You were deciding. You were trying to find your road. What am I going to be? Where do I fit into this industry? And I think you found your place. But uh, take us back to the beginning. Take us back to. Way what back when. what yeah. couldn't you be? A firefighter. That's right. That's oh, what I wanted. Oh shit! I wanted, wanted to be. A, a I wanted to be a he civil wanted, servant so badly. He wanted to be. Yeah. And it was grade eleven when my bubble was finally burst. When I had when I went to go see a, it was it was just a checkup, you know, just to see what career path could I take. And they were like, unfortunately, you can't be a firefighter. You can you can be a, a desk jockey firefighter. You can just sit there and do all the paperwork. All you know, it'd be great. But it was kind of one of those situations I just wanted to be it. I wanted to be in the field and just You wanted to be climbing into buildings, yeah. saving ladies. Is it because yeah. you would never have a six pack and they didn't want you on the calendar? They were like, Listen, you need to be sweet and sexy. And you have to shave your beard. Yeah, and you were <laughs> and like, you were like no! I'm out. No, I'm out. I nope. said I wanted to be a silver servant, but forget it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so it was... I know it's pretty lame um, how it actually came to be, but it was my grade 11 com tech teacher that one day just leaned over my shoulder and I was doing something, and he was like, I like I like that shot. I like what, how oh, you did it. Oh, he leaned over your shoulder and he liked your shot. Sorry, yeah. I thought he was going to start. <laughs> I thought it was going in a different direction, no, but this yeah. is good too. Here's the thing. He whispered into Mike's ear. Sweet nothings. And the rest is history. <laughs> so history, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, and now they're married and have three children. <laughs> they needed a bigger car. <laughs> Thank you for so that. So they got Thank rid of Carly. <laughs> and uh, about okay. this orange monstrosity. <laughs> what shot were you working on? <laughs> I, I can't remember. It was just something. It was just like one of those like, hey, just go do it. And it was, it was high school. So, you know, like we had a couple consumable cameras. Prosumer at the time. Yeah. Right. Um, and he was just like, it, it was just, it was a throwaway, a throwaway credit. You just go there and you fuck around with, with technology. You're like, here's a computer. Here's some audio gear. You could live stream if you want to. Here's, here's how you can do green screen. And we did flash and we did editing on like old school premiere. And just, it was just a throwaway. As I said, cool. it was a throwaway credit. I think, I think that, um, every teacher should hear that they can Influence. make or crush a person's dreams really easily because oh, man. like i don't think a lot of maybe they do but i don't think a lot of teachers have that thought when they make statements like so you were really inspired and you were like just that one moment where the teacher was like really good job i like that thing you kind of you didn't really have a plan and then off you went whereas you hear other stories where a person's writing and a teacher says you know what i i would go and take this career because your writing is never good and that person never writes again right and they feel uh terrible and they feel like they're you know whatever for the rest of their lives well also people forget like people certainly forget that teachers are also just human beings and sometimes they can have and sometimes they, they can open your eyes to something but sometimes they're just having a shitty day and yeah, they but, can say something they can say something a little bit like that's a little bit like or maybe they just don't get it because yeah. maybe they're not geniuses maybe mm -hmm. they're just regular people for sure and <clears throat> This person that's sitting in front of them is super, super smart, yeah. and they're not on actually on their level. Yeah, that can also happen. But so sometimes like, a kid doesn't get that. Hey. Sometimes a kid doesn't understand that a per, that a teacher is infallible. That's that's right. That right. they it's, it's, it's same with doctors, yeah. like they're just people, and you know sometimes they can say something and it shouldn't be taken too, yeah, too much to heart. So so from from grade eleven, so you start you start thinking about film. Where did yeah. you take it from there? Um, and I just kept rolling with it, and, you know, just I was I was one of those hotshot teenage kids who was like, you know, I'm gonna go to college, get a job, fuck it, played video games a lot, you know, just wasted wasted away. <laughs> and then my one of the guys I knew, his dad was the coordinator at Conestoga Radio, so he kind of had kind of a shoe in a little bit, but I had my interview with him, and since he already knew me. Half the time was us just talking about just whatever. And he'd be like, oh, you, you know, you're shit. You can come here. Mm -hmm. And this was pre-YouTube. So YouTube was mm -hmm. just just mm -hmm. coming out. So when I was going through school, YouTube was just going. And now, if anyone ever asked me, should I go to, should I go to film school? 
And the three questions you should ask yourself is, do you, do you have any friends already in the industry? If the answer is no, maybe you should go because that's how you meet people. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the drive to do it? And if you do have the drive to do it, then go out there and fucking make a movie or go on YouTube and fucking Google everything. Because a 13-year-old kid will gladly tell you how to do the film look or how to change mm -hmm. your shutter angle mm -hmm. or teach you any copious amounts of bullshit you, or you don't know or you're just like, thanks, kid. I really need to know this. It's all on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and what was the third thing? Because you said there was three things. Uh, the third one? Okay. <laughs> or the third Anti one is you just have, you'll have to go out there and eventually just drop money. He didn't if, have if a third thing. If you're serious. He said three things, you douchebag. And, no, well done. And then. You got to three. Yeah, and you'll just have to, um, eventually, if you if you really, if you, if any, anything you want to be successful in, uh, realistically, you're going to have to drop money eventually in, in the arts. In the arts, yes. not talking. There's always a cost. There's always, you've always got to pay to play. You, you, there's almost nothing you can do for free. Like even, even you want to just draw with pencil in your room, that's time and it's the cost for the pencil and the cost for the paper. Like you gotta, you gotta put, put in. Um, now what I would say to yeah. going to school and university, I would say if you're going for it to learn the technicals, the technical stuff, like how to operate a camera, how to, how to light something, how to, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. I'd say you don't Capture need to, audio, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. All the technical stuff that you need. You don't, I would say you don't need to, I'd say just go and do it. Go and get onto bigger sets. Go and learn that way. Right. If you would like to write movies and if you would like to create movies out of your brain, it's not a bad idea to go and study something where there's film theory. Because then you see, you see kind of, you can see how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like it's, re it's a really good process for your brain to go through in order to learn how to put movies together on that level. Now, you don't have to. You can do it by yourself, but I think it, I think it will give you an enriched experience. Well, they always, experience. Say, they always say that um, go and learn the structure so that if you want to later on, you can bust out of that structure and do your own thing. But understand how other people have done it. Understand how, you know, how the structure works to begin with and then move on from there. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I went to university mm -hmm. and I did a lot of film theory and I loved it and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't change it, but it also, it's also a money question. Right. If you can afford to go to university, then do it because you don't have to. Right. You can do it without because you can just go and make a movie and you, the education from just making a movie I do is hear, like through the roof. So I've heard a couple of things too and, and, and I've heard a bunch of examples, Mike, like you said, where people go to school and that's where they meet a lot of the people that they end up working with for, mm -hmm. you know, years to come or whatever. Um, the, the one, um, uh, um, I want to say Fanshaw, I could be wrong. Yeah. But, uh, I, and I wrote it down, so I'll find it and, 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 uh, and post it. But, um, somebody was recently saying that one of the Ontario colleges around us, they, uh, everybody works on a short film, like let's say it's 20, 30 minutes or whatever, mm -hmm. and everybody directs their own. Mm -hmm. So each and, uh, and then everybody else in the course, they will take some other role in every other student's film through the, through the year or whatever. So everybody gets a taste of operating camera, it's booming, you know, setting up whatever, writing, directing, totally. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so you get in that one year, like crash course, they make like 20 or 30, 30 minute feature or mm -hmm. shorts or whatever. Um, and you run the full gambit of all the different jobs that, that, uh, and whatever may come. You might yeah. be terrible at one thing. Oh, well, everybody helps each other out. So I will say that I, in terms of actual production, the actual making, yeah. I honestly feel like I learned more like, because I did a production, it's, it went into production, and we went and shot our own things, but I feel like I learned more on the first day on a big set yeah. than I did my entire time that I was there. I just, you're just like, oh, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are open, and you just have to see that, and you just have to hang around. You don't have to be there forever, right. but you just, if you're in that environment for like four or five months... I mean, you'll understand the way that things work and all the different departments and you'll see how this big machine rolls forward. It's a so beautiful you, thing. So you went to college. Yeah. Conestoga College. Kind Stri of, kind stripper of, College. Kind of regret it, but... 
kind of regret it. Well, but it was, it was a different like, landscape. And he, here's, a, here's the thing. You, you said you can meet meet people yeah. and you can work with them later. You Have can. you... No. You see? No, because what happened was so we, were a, we were a class of 20. Yeah, give us like a... So kind of homing that in. Okay, so of that class of 20, there was like three people that already going in were like there already. Right. And the one guy they was They were like, excited yeah, to be there. The, what, what, well, they were already there as in like you could see them project and the one mm-hmm. guy does microwave uh, mobile trucks like he does mo- re- remote mobile shooting he does that all around the world now the other guy who i don't re- cool. i don't remember where he went but in school he was a he was an editor he was really into weird art stuff and he was already there like you could see him always working he had that drive like he already knew what he wanted yeah like yeah. he was already there and then there was uh, one of the guys who i knew he was really good at writing but just really out there and he ended up like crashing and burning and now he does he just kind of became a nomad and just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth but talked to no one from well, talked to one person from school but they eventually went their own yeah. way out hmm. and yeah it was again it was a different landscape it was, things were so different uh pre youtube pre youtube youtube yeah. had just come out the we're talking 720i cameras just came out when when i was hitting second year wow now, is there... She's is 720i. 720i. I mean, let, 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 let me let me just say, interlaced is like... It's just so caca. Yeah. God, but, it's so... But, I, I've had... I shot music videos where the interlaced and the progressive got mixed up and I had these weird wavy lines and uh, let's just say that it, it was a bad situation. Did you ever learn how to, how to, 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 to de-interlace? Oh, man, you had to do, every, you had you had to do everything. <laughs> de-interlace. Yeah. So how much time between college and when you met this guy? Man, must have been, I'm, I'm going to say almost like what, four, four years? Must have been. Five years. Five, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, I, was, I was afraid of that. Yeah. I was afraid of, that. Yeah. I was afraid of how, so, actually how the reality. So give us, give us, give us a, 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 a breakdown. So you, you left college and you tried tried i did i did a bunch of bunch of stuff and then, you know like um spent spent some time trying to trying to figure out what i wanted you know went back to play video games all, all the time with my friends because you know again hot shot kid i told myself i'm fucking gonna make it fucking ceo right here yeah bring it <laughs> Mo- mega mega dollars <laughs> millennial so, come to millennial me like yeah I, I want you doing this so i did a so just off and on you know trying got got on a couple of things things some things worked some things didn't and then you just start learning. Is is this really what you want to do? Mm-hmm. And again, just I just kind of just what's, what's one life. of the what's one of the the uh, the highlights uh, of your career uh, prior to greenhouse? Do you get to work on any big sets? Do you get um, to do anything particularly I'm cool? Pretty sure I can say it because I think I think the movie's out. I had never actually got around to seeing it, but I. Uh, but do you guys know who David Hare is? No. Okay, and that's gonna sound really fucking nerdy now. Um, okay, so he wrote I th- X Men One, I think X Two. He's the voice cool. of Solid Snake in the Metal Gear Solid. Cool. So he was on a feature, and I actually got to meet him. And I slept in my car for two nights because I was past Toronto shooting. I was I was an, I was a PA. Oh man! And like, I showed up the night before. I was supposed to shoot. They didn't. They were, they, they, didn't... Were, they were leaving. They were all leaving, and then the producer walked by, and he's like. I'm like, hey, is this the set for this for this movie? And the producer was like, yep, you're late. I'm like, uh, but I'm supposed to show up tomorrow. He's like, cool, you're early. Good job, man. And walked off. And they all jumped in their cars and drove home. And the next morning, everyone comes back. And one guy kind of quietly walks over. He's like, man, did you sleep in your car last night? I'm like, yeah. Am, is that weird? He's like, no, man. Like, mad respect. And never got his information. Just never, never thought to even try to connect with the people around me i was yeah, just yeah, so yeah. like oh this so this is what it's like to make a movie and so give us give us first of all what was the movie called uh it's called the devil's mile okay never heard mm-hmm. of it you Mm-mm. amazing it's, it's out but there. there's but there's a bajillion it's, oh but there's sure. a bajillion movies that get made like 100 mm-hmm. percent. there's We're an entire industry trivia later and we don't know anything but but give us give us what's a day on the set like as a pa like give us a couple stories oh man it was what like you, what was your job Oh, fuck it was everything like one time it was move a bunch of um sandbags around other times it was hold a flag to cut off like because it was a kind of it was a paranormal ghost story mm-hmm. 
And so at one point, when when they, they they spun the camera around, I had to lean in with a flag to cut the light off this girl's face, so they were gonna like make her look like she's dead, and they wanted to have this moment of going from like clarity to like what the fuck just happened. Mm -hmm. And it was that I had to drive the cube van, which had all the crew in the back on a jib, and then carrying oh you had to drive the cast in in a, in a picture car on to, on the um, trailer. You drove which van did you drive? Oh, you drove the cube van the in cube front van with, that the, was, with the that camera. Was pulling, yeah, it was yeah, pulling. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. And they had there, there was a private air uh, private airstrip this guy had. It was like a mile long in the middle of I think Orangeville, somewhere out there. Yeah. And we just drove loops cool. all day and it was You the, were pulling the picture car? Yeah. And then the, the at first I was really Were you like, pulling the picture car? Yeah. On a trailer. On the trailer. Oh. And then in the back of the cube van was Wow. All the, so at first I was like, oh, you know, young and green and everything. Like, I don't I really don't want to, like, I had to turn. And so then the, the one producer kept doing it. And he was like, listen, man, like after a couple of times, like, we're not going to make our fucking day if you don't, you don't fucking pull your weight and help us out. So he's like, can you, can you do me solid? And can you fucking pull your weight? Like politely, but eventually kind of like saying, in a, in a kind of like help us out here. So I had to start, you know, doing casually turning and the, the, the production manager, would like radio in and be like, "Hey man, so we're gonna do a turn and nice and slow, and we're gonna take a cut, so we're gonna, we're gonna start rolling. So don't fuck up. Cool. Thanks, man. Bye. Like, just, <laughs> just get off the radio and just keep keep the keep the the steady pace that we were driving at. So cool. like no sudden stops, no weaving. Just yeah, yeah, keep yeah. steadily going in a going in a loop. That's amazing. And then we spent like hours just driving in circles. Yeah. Now, how did you All just day. for just for? And I don't know if the if the <clears throat> process is the same, but how did you get the job as a PA? craigslist yeah it was a it was a long shot i think it was something completely different because this was again really long ago and i think it was because i met a guy who was doing um some work for the play fight play fight from toronto they do vfx they were doing a call of duty 2 finding makarov short film it's on youtube my name is in there and under, under the credits as like a production office bitch or something. Um, production office bitch. So they, they were doing, so they did um, a proof of concept piece to pitch. Mm -hmm. This was just before they were play fight and they were just pitching out there and they ended up getting call of duty. Look, call of duty looking at it and be like, sweet, you guys should come play it at, play it down in LA. And that's where they met cool. bigger people and they went off and did their, their own stuff. But it was, I think it was, through one of the guys in the office that actually connected with me. And he spent a couple hours talking to me the one time on the phone being like, okay, you can ask me three questions and I'll answer anything you want. It's like for, from the, cause they came up with a, with a proof of concept trailer. It was all first person. I'm like, how'd you do the rig? And they're like, okay, our camera guy had a camera on his helmet and the monitor was on his back and his huge ass rig. This was before, you know, the, the first person DUI rigs. Like they mm -hmm, had, they actually mm -hmm. had a heavy rig on this yeah, guy. Yeah. 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 I'm like, hey, two, there, there's a scene where you guys jump out of, out of an airplane, like out of, a, out of a helicopter. How the fuck did you do that? He's like, okay, the thing was shooting in Toronto, and he's like, they have a helicopter. So we managed to weasel our, weasel our, our way in for one night with this helicopter, and it was just green screen. But the thing is that they actually were in a live a, a helicopter that they were using for another movie, and they happened to get it for one night to shoot all their interiors. And, okay, we're going to jump out of the uh, jump out of the helicopter, but like that kind of Call of Duty Adrenaline Rush style mm -hmm. shoot mm -hmm. shot. Cool. And I can't remember the third one because it was, by that point, I was already s starstruck about just hearing these guys. drooling. Guys, guys doing it and being there. And yeah. Yeah. Creating this. That's cool, man. Now, how did you, and, and I still think that's the way people do it. I think people go on Kijiji, they go on Craigslist, mm -hmm. they go on Mandy, whatever, and they, they just apply for things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's always job Facebook. That's how I started. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> when well, I first we're not arrived, here to in, talk about you. when I first arrived in Canada, it was also a Craigslist. Was it? Yeah. That's why I met age. It was it was Kijiji. Kijiji. I think you were just looking for people. Yeah. Who just wanted to. That, and that's how you guys met. You, yeah. You put ads on Kijiji. Greenhouse happened to fire Kijiji. Yeah. That's how I met Derek. Even everyone. Yeah. yeah. So so talk about talk about the the process of you guys meeting for the first time. Yeah. It was well. It was Tim was Hortons, it? the usual hangout spot for any any creative type to want to connect with other creative types. Yeah, I think I, I think I was just and I was just it was a greenhouse was a free movie. Right. 
not you're not getting paid yeah. but uh someone with a camera yeah that's what that's what i asked for and michael said hey man i got a camera so he came out and uh and boom and then we made you a little shoulder rig yeah because we were going to do handheld right what kind of camera did you have it back then uh remember? t3i the rebel that was okay uh again the scope of the universe 5d mark 3 had just come out and the guy at henry's was like hey man do you want to do you maybe you want to get a 5d mark 3 they're all the rave i was like fuck who wants that yeah of course of course everybody, but it's also everyone, a money everyone, question everyone wanted that but yeah right. again it was do you do you spend the money then and take the hurt but it was a, di- a different time. It was a different me. It was a different different universe. Mm-hmm. Was now, a... did you guys do single camera on Greenhouse, or did you you had your own camera mm-hmm. and he, you had one? So you guys yeah. had two camera. Seven D and a T three I. Yeah. And it's I mean they're the same same lens when you're shooting videos. Ten eighty P looks good. Away we went, eh? What's uh, what was uh, any uh, kind of um, favorite <laughs> moments that you can remember about shooting Greenhouse? Uh, my fa- my absolute favorite, favorite was shot. was Christian laughing because um oh, what's his name what's his name come on come Derek? in Zach Zach uh, Zach Parsons he threw a golf club at a greenhouse window and it was supposed to smash yeah and it didn't and all you hear is the hits hits he connects doesn't smash Christian ha like hell that would what happened <laughs> It's, all, it's in the take somewhere. It just starts laughing. Just yeah. did you? Were you a professional, or did your camera shake? No, I, I didn't laugh because I have. I, I don't. I don't want to sound cocky and be like, "Well, I, I have a great tendency not to like choke up." But there's certain moments that like Adrian would be in tears, or someone else. They seem so emotional. I'm like, am I the only one who's like not in tears? Can we? Can we do that again? See, here's the thing. Mike is a professional cameraman. He doesn't give a shit about your movie. He's there to like. Make sure Put the, the shot camera happens. there and make sure he captures what you need. <laughs> Love it. That's but the best. it sounds super cocky, and I He's hope like, that I'll I, watch the I movie later. I hope that doesn't come across as being cocky because read the script. Are you kidding? What is this movie about? Where should I point the camera? Just tell me that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. I actually I remember mm-hmm. moments of um, of a shifted uh, once Winter Wonderland where I was like, oh man, yeah, and you were like. Yeah, I just need to point the camera over here and do this thing. You were you were talking very. I need to point the light down and make sure that this guy's face is lit. And I was more paying attention to the actual performance, and you really weren't. You were paying attention to what you were seeing in the camera. So I mean, I think you know. That's the mark of a cameraman. For but sure. read the script. Read the script. <sighs> read the script. Yeah. Yeah, you must. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You got, you, when you when you when you when you're one of the guys creating the look for the movie, you gotta read the script. Don't be caca. I did. Good. Did you? I did. Get out of here. I got. It did you read Shifted? Yeah. <laughs> what? No, Speaking you don't, you don't get that. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Left Jesus. Unbelievable. But, I mean, I don't know how he could read the script. We only wrote it. Like yeah, we wrote it. Yeah, it was bad. Um, okay, cool. So um, now, how? I, I honestly cannot remember. It's probably Kijiji, but how did we end up meeting up? It was for another project because I have a weird what, memory. What was like the that. name of that project? The one it was your movie, Jason. It was it involved an ambulance, and I don't remember the run, the rest of it. Okay, it, you, now we did felt, you did you we come, fell off the face of the planet together? Now for did a you long come? Time. Did you come to the set of my movie? No, we okay. met we met at Tim Hortons, and you pitched it to me again to yeah. Tim Hortons. You pitched it to me, and we're like, great, that's awesome, and then we kind of disappeared for a so, long time and not talked okay very cool so i was sh- shooting what what uh Wirtz and i call kind of our film school i we're gonna run late here on this show um but uh we were shooting a film called world's greatest you get low huh? and uh yeah and again kijiji we were very uh we were reaching out to everyone um we it was very um ambitious we were shooting all over the place. Mm-hmm. We we did shoot in an ambulance. We shot in a coffee shop. We shot in a schoolboy schoolboy era. That's what yeah, we did with Greenhouse brutal. as well. We were all brutal. over the place. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. Someday we'll we'll talk about that one. But <clears throat> so yeah, I I probably met everyone that lived in the city at one point, and uh, and so we f- we fell off the face of the earth. Now, did you just reach out to me directly um, during BLJZ, or did you put up a? Uh, I think I was just 
pissing. My memory's terrible is why I'm I think I was just, just pissing in the wind, just, you know, being like, because it was Adrian. Into the wind? Into the wind, and probably back on myself, because a, cause Adrian was like, we just finished Greenhouse, and then we were talking about something, and, and you were just like, fuck it, bro, just make a movie. Just go yeah. do it. Go make some mistakes. And it was a mistake, but <laughs> but it was it's a reflection of who I was at the time. Exactly, that's why you shouldn't hide from it, dude. I don't like it. Yeah, but I don't t- like I something. don't like a lot of the things about the things I'm that I've made. Something. I like it. I, so this is what, what, what's the what's the other uh, BLJZ three eleven uh, three three forty three forty. Now, so so it, it's a license plate. So and now now when you were you're gearing up to shoot this short film, you reached out to me because you wanted me to read the script, if I recall correctly. You were I looking for a little think bit of a script so. doctor. I think yeah, I think so. And there was um, one of the you, you had some gaps. Yeah, there was one guy who reached <clears throat> who actually hit me up and was like, "Here's here's the points, some points you can fix." And mm-hmm. I was like, "Who the fuck are you?" And he's like, "I'm an English major." I'm like, "Oh, okay. I'm sorry." <laughs> and he kind of helped me. Then he fell off the face of the planet, and I reached out to him. To be like, thanks, man. Like, this is my finished product. Yeah. Never heard from him again. Just I, and I know who he is, and I don't know if he remembers who I am, and I don't bring it up because I don't know how he's gonna react to, to the to hearing that I remember who he is, and if he doesn't remember who I am. And that don't is matter. The legend of Beggar Vance. <laughs> the legend of the English major. Um, doesn't matter. You should just bring it up. You should be like, hey, man, do you remember me? Uh, you uh, jerk. I'm, I'm st- I, I, I like I like that that flair of mystery. I like doing things and then just being like, you know what? Just like, <laughs> like Batman. And yeah, kind of like that. You you know like you know smoke something, bomb and you're you know away. Something <laughs> that no one else knows, uh-huh. and you just leave it that leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. So very cool. So I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, now you brought me on as assistant director. The project was something. That's something. I can't remember. That's what I ended up being. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was um, uh, March. It was supposed to be a warm winter day, and it turned out to be a fucking like it super was, cold. And it was uh, supposed to be snowing though. No, no, no. It was supposed to. It was supposed read to read the script. Were you a cameraman on that? Show? Yeah, it was supposed. That's where to, I met you. It was supposed to be know, a warm winter oh, day. And ended up being like fucking brutally a cold. warm winter day. Yeah, but it was supposed to. There was supposed to be snow on the ground, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, snow on the was, ground. Yeah, snow on. It yeah. was cold. Whoa. It was, and it, it was, was a mess, and I, I feel terrible, and I. No, I don't think you should feel that bad about this little movie, dude. Go and watch it again. I do. Oh, you do. Every, no, not often. Every night. No, 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 no. Someone, someone, I know, someone I know will ask. Someone like will ask me who I know, and they'll be like, "So how'd you come up?" And I'll be like, "So, really so let's movie. let's run down." So a couple couple of the people that we met on your your couple of the people that I got to meet uh, for the first time uh, working on your your project. First of all, this guy, uh, Christian, our our uh, who became our sound engineer on, and he was on Greenhouse mm-hmm. and uh, Bickerman's mm-hmm. and Postman and. Uh, and shifted mm-hmm. in the art of eight limbs. He's always always been around. Mm-hmm. Um, Danny Bailey, mm-hmm. who uh, who came out as a, an extra shooter uh, for you. Now, did, did you know Danny or did no? You just put he a... he reached out to me on Gigi yeah. and he was like, "I'm in town. I'll do whatever the fuck you want." I'm the... like, "Cool. You you want to be my clapper?" He's like, "Done." Yeah. And he comes out and starts talking about like, "Oh, I, like not boasting, but being like." I go around Canada and I shoot E and G stuff for like sports and like lifestyle and yeah yeah. I'm like, We're what gonna... the fuck are you I... doing here? And he's like, I just want to help the little guy. So that's what he, that's what he, that was so such a shock to me. I was like, and I actually said it to him. I was like, he was like, yeah, no, I shoot sports shows, sports yeah. TV shows, yeah, things. And this was just a little like this is the, n- n- no one's getting paid. Yeah. Everybody's standing around in the cold, and I just and I looked at him and I said, what are you doing here? Like, and he's like, oh, I'm just, you know, rather than sit at home, I'll come and help you out. Yep. He loves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And And coincidentally, <clears throat> he was ju- he was shooting with us uh, on the Art of Eight Limbs. Yep. Um, at the end of February. And, uh, or April, rather. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, we, I've got one of his SD cards, uh, so I'm holding it ransom. He's going to be on the show yeah. uh, in a, a couple weeks, and we're going to sit down and chat with him as well. Get his little bit of a story, so that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, otherwise, he's never getting his SD card back. I hope you're watching, Danny. You're out. So out an SD card. So uh, Brienne was there, makeup artist. That's right. And uh, who else? Dave I'm Guthrie. Not... Yeah. Mine? Dave was your friend. Dave. Dave was my buddy, I, and uh, and I, I think I brought him out, and he did a crack nose, if I remember yeah. correctly. 
and uh, on uh, John, John the actor's name. Yeah, Jonathan. 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 I still talk to him now and then. I have a I have an idea, have a project for him soon. I'll tell you the favorite moment of, that I with in your film. All right. Was when the actor and the actress were like covered in other people's blood. Yeah. And then they started making, making out life. in the blood. I was like, that's next level. That's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. That's good shit. Yeah, I but like it's that. it's so cliche film school though. Guns, violence, sex. Yeah, it's just I think, like it's I everything. Think a a radio. Movie. Here's the thing. I think you're making a mistake here, assuming that that's not what people still want. There's no, a reason no. things are a cliche. Yeah, yeah. it's but because everyone loves them. Everyone. That's but, true. but that's that was my my film school. Yeah. Like, but it, the, all I was missing is the fridge shot. Yeah. And waking up to an oh, alarm God. clock, like it, the oh. the definition of a film, a film yeah. student project was and exactly you put them that. In, you put them in uh, four a.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't come far, heavy. This is like but four see, but, years but, later. But the thing, is, but the thing, the thing <coughs> oh is, you can, you can get away with doing shots like that if it makes sense. Yeah. Just having that inadvertent fridge shot well, for now no that reason. I called you on it. Like there, there, there's a reason for everything, but just having it like, why do you, why do you have an alarm? Someone waking up to an alarm clock late on their special day, like the most important day of their life. Yeah, if you if it's not part of the story, just cut it out. Yeah, if you don't need to see them brushing their teeth, who cares? I think uh, one of my favorite parts uh, wasn't was actually <clears throat> so one thing that I really thought was funny. We have to put the we have to put put the link to the video oh, yeah, in, in the show notes. One hundred percent. All That's twenty, idea. All, all seven people that listen to our podcast are going to watch your show. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going live now. Otherwise, we got to steal it and get it, put it up there somehow. <laughs> but uh, the one thing I remembered was it is freezing out, and much like putting him in charge of driving, you know, the crew and and the the cast truck on the back. Sometimes, sometimes you do a thing that's a little crazy, and and all the cast were amazing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were acting in the freezing cold, right? And the, yeah, and the, they were they were dressed in skimpy stuff, right? They're they're in like just a quick t-shirt, you know. Uh, and uh, the one girl was freezing. I kept every take. We kept having to wrap everybody mm-hmm. up in jackets and and great big um, blankets. Um, but uh, the one thing that I thought was funny was during one of the downtimes, uh, I think it was Christian started playing with slow mo cameras no danny bay he he had a little handheld shooter that went to 240 frames and christian goes running with the gun and he dives and lands right in the snowbank you remember that that was funny anyways also good story good story or that one guy came by i thought so i thought that's hilarious (laughs) he drove he drove by in his uh in a car and we're like every time someone came by we're trying to gun wrangle everyone put the guns away they're they look real fucking put them away and the guy stops like hey you guys shoot a movie and we're like yeah yeah it's cool he's like cool I got a gun right here. Just like, just cat. He's a hunter. He's like, and then he kind of leaned over and he has a, he has, sure enough, has a hunting rifle right in his, right in his like little dash, dash console beside him. And then he's just like, oh, okay, cool. Just, just being like, hey, you think, <laughs> you think, you think yours is cool? Mine's yeah, cool. Yeah, mine shoot, really shoots. Yeah. We have, we have kind of a history of, uh, people coming to visit us on set. Um, the, uh, the cops did show up at my world's greatest. Mm-hmm. Uh, the some random uh, guy showed up when we were shooting Postman. Do you remember that? Remember the street? Remember the scene where we were doing the differentiator, and uh, we were on that street in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. This is a street in the middle of nowhere, and a guy pulls up and he pulls over. He's like, "Hey, do you guys have a permit to be shooting here?" And I was like, "Absolutely, we do." He was like, "Bullshit! Let me see it." So I went into the car and I grabbed a receipt that was in my car. And I walked up with this piece of paper, and he's like, fine, he drives away. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well played, Thank Jason. You. That's how you do it. Poker Make face. Make sure you have a piece of paper in your car, you know? <clears throat> Poker face. But uh, we were just shooting the last scene of Shifted in the forest, and there's blood. Mm, oh, yeah. There's blood, a little bit of blood on the, uh, on the ground, on the roots, and on a, on a big log. And these people are walking by. And uh, one of our characters has some blood on his face. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, is everybody okay? Yeah, blood on his hand. Blood on his hand, blood on yeah. his face. <clears throat> Anyways, so we had to... It's just a movie. And basically what we realized is that you could go into the forest, actually murder someone, as long as you had a camera there. And then someone came in and go like, oh, what's happening? You're like, it's just a movie, it's fine. So if you ever 
you know, murder. Want to get away with have it? A just have a camera there and a clapperboard, and people won't ask so many questions. Just there. Go, oh wow, that looks really real. I've, I've had yeah, that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that happen to me too. Where I, do I, not go and kill somebody. Still murder, <laughs> do not I, do that. I shot something. So I was shooting a piece of a music video, and I was digging a homemade grave in a forest. And this this, this Asian guy, out of nowhere, is talking on the phone, looking for I think magic mushrooms in the forest. He looks at me. I look at him. I'm just digging a grave. He casually turns around and walks the other direction because he caught me and I caught him in the act of doing both things to be illegal. Was his name Lunchbox? No. Okay. And That's then, so hilarious. Then we were, so we were done. We were just finishing up shooting, you know, metal music video and everything. Yeah. And I'm leaving and this, um, the city, one of these city patrol guy comes to come by on his dirt bike and he stops and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, we're just shooting a music video. Like, I have, like all my gear out and all my cases and I have a shovel beside me. I'm like, oh, I'm just packing up you know we're just leaving i was just shooting a music video he's like oh, okay he's like oh, okay you know i'm just concerned you know people are illegally dumping shit in the forest and you know that, that's wrong you shouldn't do that i'm like do you want to see my gear and he's like no 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 it's cool cool i trust you man and just as long as you're calm about it not you're not oh man i'm gonna get caught Fuck. i think Sean he Ryan's probably could get your away. heart out how to get away with murder mm-hmm. be a film crew. was there a body in the bottom of the thing no. Oh no, it's all casual. It's all casual, man. No, amazing. <clears throat> all right. So, so, so now you you hate this short film. I do. We, now, we but let's it. let's let's put let's put some some his emotions and his hatred for his work into context. Right. Have you ever shot anything that you loved? I like pieces of things I've done. There's certain shots of stuff that I love. That that they're like, that there was one shot in Punishment that I really liked how. I tried to do a Frank Castle spin where you make up, we tried to make him look more like a band, like um, a Western bandit yeah. where the skull is part of his, he, his bandana is part of the skull. The skull bleeds onto his shirt. And I like that concept. And there's certain shots that are like, Sorry. yeah, that's cool. <laughs> like that was really cool. Or that shot was cool. Not but yet. overall time. Yeah. I just don't, I just don't think there's really, what I'm, was your, what was your favorite part about, uh, BLJZ, do you, can you remember back that far? Sh um, shooting it or yeah, shooting it? Yeah. Well, you think I'll tell yeah. you? I'll tell you a little story about about Nick, um, who is one of your lead characters. Um, oh, for shit! We just have to pause here for a second. Let's pause. Well, just like if not pause, tell us, tell us, tell us a story, Jay. All right. So. So one of the lead characters was this guy named Nick. Do you remember his last name? Smith. Nick Smith. Smythe? With a Y, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. So one day I'm at the dentist. You might have to hold it. It's going to tip. I'll just yeah, hold it. Hold it. I'll hold one it day I'm at the dentist and I'm lying up in the dentist chair and there's a commercial for 7-Eleven and some dude is like, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm out of toilet paper. And I'm like, that really looks like that fucking guy from that short film that I did with Mike. On it goes. And uh, they played that commercial four times while I was in the dentist chair. Yeah, man. And then I was sure it was him. Yeah. And uh, Nick, uh, BLJC340 fame, 7-Eleven commercial. So That's right. He, he doesn't like that. I'm just going to throw it out there. He's going to see this one day and be like, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't That's He got his start no, with he, Mike Malcolm. He was, he was already, well, not to say that, he was already popular before yeah. i chased him down for, for that role mm -hmm. amazing because i i want because i had worked with him i had been on another project that he was on and i really liked how he was but yeah he was already established yeah and already more he's already he, he's a working actor and he he does a, lot of, that, a lot of the 7-eleven stuff and he does he does for movies and he does stuff like that but mm -hmm. let me tell you something i would never be ashamed of being in a 7-eleven commercial because that I feel like 7-Eleven has some, some cheddar. Oh, he's ashamed of the 7-Eleven commercial. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, I'm pretty sure he. No. I don't know why. I'm oh, pretty I, sure I don't he doesn't know. care for for my short film. Oh. But not, no, no, he loves. I know definitely he loves making money. Seven, yeah, making money. Obviously, 100%. who doesn't love making money? 7-Eleven has been great for him. And, yeah. yeah. And he got a start on um, uh, video on trial, much music. He put a, he cool. submitted a demo tape and they, they loved his his look and cool. asked him to come out to do one and then, honestly i thought he was great in the short no he's great i just just yeah cool just don't think he really cares for it. and that's that's cool you know 
not everyone's gonna not everyone's gonna love it. That's the best right. part is tough shit. Right? Like not everybody loves anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Right? Everything that you do, there's gonna be some people that are like, I love that or eh. Majority people are like, especially with film, because they are because they they have a constant stream of the best stuff in the world. Like people don't realize that the stuff that they're watching on Netflix, that's the Olympic quality of film. All the stuff that is internationally, like everybody knows, yeah. that's the Olympics. They don't realize that there's an entire mountain of of people making content who who live below the, that Olympic level, right? So, a lot of times, anyone that's below that level gets a meh. Yeah. Because even the Olympic level guys, they get a meh. And so, like, in order to really make a difference you know you really stand out yeah you really got to work hard and you got to you got to do a lot of meh yeah you got to make a lot of meh before you make someone go or holy only shit. only like 20 percent of the audience go holy shit right so you gotta you gotta really plow through the meh and we've been plowing through the meh for a long time amazing yeah so now that's just something that i'd like to talk i just, yeah. just like michael now <clears throat> Because Michael has come so far, excuse me, <coughs> with his shooting and his ability yes. and, and his gear and equipment, because these things go hand in hand. Can you just talk a little bit about the gear and equipment that you have? And can you talk to someone who's thinking about getting a camera? Because you've owned lots of different camera systems. And at the moment, talk about the camera systems you do own. And if someone's looking to get into it, and I know, I know that the common answer is always like, what do you want to use the camera for? But just give people, because people want to use the camera for everything. So give them the camera. Just tell them the camera. Yeah. Like, don't, don't be like, well, what do you want to use it for? Because if you want to shoot movies, then you can use this. Or if you want to shoot weddings, we don't know. Nobody knows what yeah. they're going to do. They might get asked to do any number of things, and they want a camera that's going to blow, blow people's minds. Yeah. So what camera? What camera? And it, talk about your gear and equipment. First, talk about the gear and equipment that you have, and then give us a camera. Okay. So, right now, I am shooting with the A7S II. Um, Equipment-wise, I'm slowly getting in more into LEDs. I, I'm i not an Aperture fanboy, but holy fuck, am I blown away with what they've been able to do. But there's, there's a barrier right now that everyone is kind of stuck at this... Um, 575 hmi equivalent and no one's at the moment no one's getting past that everyone everyone's stuck at this kind of barrier in like terms of led tech so just explain what you mean by that 570 barrier okay i don't i don't even know what so you're there about. so uh roughly um an hmi is about four times brighter than a tungsten a tungsten mm -hmm. fixture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the what what i mean by that is that so the spectrum if we're talking lighting spectrum your your tungsten Kelvin is a very lower than than a daylight spectrum. So you're going from like an orangey red to a blue, and so your spectrum goes. You're going from a small part. I can't use both hands, but you, you get what I mean. But you're using that spectrum of mm -hmm. right, of level. So it takes more power to get a higher to higher level. Yes, to get to get to a brighter light. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's, or to get to a bluer light. Yeah. yeah. So what what I mean by that by, the, by this barrier is that there everyone want everyone's playing the price game now. It's not a matter anymore of people bitching about a camera system's a hundred grand to get into. Like cameras no longer a hundred grand. Equipment's no longer a hundred grand. And now it's becoming such such uh, broken barriers and everyone can do it. Mm -hmm. Everyone and their grandma can shoot a movie. Everyone and their grandma can do original content now. Now it's coming back to story, but also that everything's becoming more accessible through LEDs mm -hmm. and uh, plasma plasma lighting and just everything's getting faster, stronger, easier. And that price, that the pay to play model is becoming less. Mm -hmm. And that's again, that's when, when I, what I'm getting into, into as well is the out with the old in with the new. And there will always be people that are going to be like tungsten is the best lighting system ever, you know, you can't replicate skin tones those tungsten lights can do. I'm, I'm not in for that. I'm in for what is going to make my stuff look amazing without, you know, breaking the bank and spending $15,000 on an M18. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about uh, talk to, how much have you spent in the last two years, do you think? 
on equipment because you've done a lot of upgrading yeah. in the last little yeah. bit in the last two years uh easily probably nice wife Cover yeah your earmuffs yeah <laughs> um she's she's cool with it as long as i have a game plan about how i can pay it off or as long as i'm going to use it i easily 50 grand mm -hmm. and this is this is including your you have purchased a red camera red camera system yeah actually i got out of that which, yeah so you you yeah. partnered up with someone and yeah, you owned and a red for finally yeah, kind of, kind of <laughs> well uh, yeah, we'll talk about this after the fact <laughs> okay cool but you're out of that partnership yeah, now i'm out of that but there, there's new things that i'm chasing which cool. um in uh, i'm chasing things like next year i'm looking at buying a new camera that is something that what camera it's called kinfinity it was it was a camera that I was looking at before before I even considered red. But oh. the problem was when I looked at it, they had a f they had announced being like, "This is a new camera that we're coming out with," and everyone was scared because they're they're a company that's never never played. Yeah, they're they're out of Asia. They you know, customer service might be might be god awful, and no one wanted to pay to play because mm -hmm. you're afraid. And now they're people are starting to play with it. You know, things are coming out. It's a really it's a nice system. A third of the price and look you can get comparable stuff and mm. now that, what's the global shutter rolling but honestly who's gonna sit there and go uh, with your with your shot most of the time you're just it's just action you're just yeah you're, you're oh yeah it. totally most of the time you're most good time. yeah but like yeah so what's what's the camera system that um that they were touting a while back i was watching a lot of videos about and then it seems to have dropped off now that just might be because i i'm not paying as much attention right now but what was the camera system that um you wouldn't need green screen anymore because it pays attention to depth and it can remove things that are past a certain point and all this kind of stuff have you guys that was a program that they were working on there's a couple well i think it was i think it was a program and a, a camera system combined yeah, because it required the certain camera, and it was, it was like, so what they would show is they they had two people getting married on all kinds of different stuff, and then they, they like, uh, shot confetti in front of them or at some point, and then they were able to like take the confetti and move it back here because mm -hmm. the camera knows exactly where every piece of the puzzle is, so they were able to do, and then they were able to pull out all this other stuff in the background yeah do you no, remember that that's I, I mean i hear what you're saying it just sounds like a, it sounds like a program oh, okay it, it sounds it, like it, a program they might, but they might have fed it from a camera yeah any camera you have into a program the, the program pre-renders it for you mm -hmm. and there are programs like that i can't remember what they're called at the moment but i've, I've heard of them mm -hmm. and they're constantly coming up with new things too there was a guy who was explaining um, they, they did it on Avatar too, where there was green screen, but James yeah. Cameron had it already pre-rendered right. on his director monitors to be like, well, over here you see a beautiful waterfall, and yeah, yeah. you show you show them, mm -hmm. so they can act inside of the environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, so the answer to your question, the, the other one is what people should do. We should, should buy the should most people... expensive camera you can get your hands on. But do you need a red? No. Do you need an Alexa? Fuck no. Do you need a black magic 4K in a pocket? Maybe. Do you need a GH5? That's up to you. I would recommend A7S2 that I am very biased about it or you can wait for the A7S3. Whatever you dive in, dive in at the top if you can. It hurts. It sucks. You pay once, you cry once. And, and then... get out there and fucking make some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that equipment to make some money. Yeah, yeah use it. Because and learn you, to love it. Yeah. You have gotten jobs because you had a top of the line camera. Yeah, and that's how you make. That's how you meet your contacts. And that's how you meet your friends. And that's yeah, how you... because certainly people that are wanting to shoot, they need you to have the camera they want, because otherwise they're not interested. Right. But with that said, you don't need to spend copious amounts of money to meet people and get out there and make something. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. Like, like before to get into the world you bought a c100 you left your t3i you went to a c100 and that was a big jump for you oh yeah that was an expensive jump that was wasn't very it very expensive jump but i paid that off within eight months you paid the camera off with in the work full, in full cool. it was it was a mixture of things but primarily i had a game plan and you should have a game plan you should know what you want to do mm -hmm. and ideally how you can make your money back yeah 
his finances were amazing and then he started buying gear and equipment yes. they're still great <laughs> it's just a more poor your gear just poor. closer to the bread line these days yeah yeah, yeah. but but he but, but you have a lot looking, of equipment it's looking better yeah yeah all right gentlemen here's what we're gonna do now we're gonna we can keep chit chatting but we're gonna do some trivia now yeah this is a little something that we do on every show, Mike, if you've been lo- I, I, a loyal, I watch. A loyal I'm fan. I'm going to fail good, miserably, but okay. Man. Here you go. Here we go. We'll just do two today. This is our super trivia segment. We don't have a, a theme song for this. It's his fault. Trivia. So we read question number two, Mike. Okay. We're going to go We're gonna go back and forth. And now you have the opportunity to answer, so don't look at the answers. Where are the answers? I'm sorry. On, on the back. The back. There, so if I were to flip this around, that's correct. Yeah. So don't flip it around. You and you're holding two cards. So if you flip both of them around, it will not be the answer to your you, question. You've, okay. you've read a trivia question off card before, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You know how to read, right? Listen, do yeah. me a favor. Stop, don't don't stop cheating. Answer. I'm just, no, I don't he want saw. to cheat. No, he I, saw. I can't see. But no, I, it's, it's he saw already. It's a different card, so he's going he's gonna to forget. Here we go. I'm totally going to forget. We've talked about my my uh, memory. Oh, damn it. You should have been like, my what? What's the, what's yeah, there? exactly. Damn it. Uh, set me up there. Here we go. I'm going first. In what movie does Michael Keaton Jaws. awake? No, Jaws. Sorry. Oh, never mind. Carry on. Is there, is there a time limit on Michael this? Michael Keaton no. awake? In what movie does Michael Keaton awake to find the woman he picked up the night before dead from an allergic reaction to cocaine? Michael Keaton dead allergic reaction to cocaine. Shoot, I have not seen this movie. That definitely would not be Batman. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 I'm gonna. I'll say Dead Ringer. That sounds terrible. That's a. That's a terrible guess. I don't know. I'm just gonna say Multiplicity because I don't know. That's a comedy. <laughs> that would be amazing if that was right. And I. No, I've never seen. No clue. I've there we go. No clue. Clean and sober. Really. Name the film that had Drew, Ed, Lewis, and Bobby taking a trip. Drew, Ed, Lewis, and Bobby taking a trip. Drew, Ed, Lewis, and Bobby. So what year was this, this game made? No. This is an older game. Oh, okay. These are older questions, okay. right? Planes, trains, and automobiles. That was a good question. I'm going to say something like it hot. I'm going to go. I'm gonna throw my answer away and go Euro Trip. Amazing. <laughs> Deliverance. Euro Trip it is. Deliverance. What? Deliverance. Oh. Deliverance is like... Okay. All right, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play against all your rules and pick a different one. Cause no, you is... can't, because the others aren't questions. What do you mean they're not questions? All right, they're, they're not like... questions, or they they're just statements. They're things. I don't know what they are. They're not things. Okay, go. All right, here's, here should be one easy then for you guys. Okay. Jurassic Park, the piano. Jurassic Park, the piano. Oh, are you trying to find a similarity? Composer mm-hmm. Han- I... Hans Zimmer. I will say. I don't know. I have no idea. I so, no idea. so there's different ones. That's why you guys only pick number two. That's right, because number two is a question, uh, and know, whatever you. Fuck well, it, and I, now I, I'm I, curious. I, I yeah. Fuck the, okay. the machine. So it's okay. Sam Neil. Oh, he maybe he acts in both of them. Well, he he definitely acts in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh, okay. He must be in the piano. He's, okay. He's Grant, okay. Doctor Grant. Now I understand how you get this game. Here runs. we go. Who played Conehead Beldar? I'll Dan Aykroyd. Nice. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. You are correct, sir. Yes. Who wrote the Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Color Purple? Hmm. The Color Purple, which is then made by Steven Spielberg. Did The Color Purple have Whoopi Goldberg in it? It very well might. I don't actually I know. I, I've like never it. seen it. I could be wrong, but she was in Jumpin' Jack Flash. Yes, she was. I have no clue. I'm going to say... I have no idea. <laughs> Who's the poet? Um, Maya Angelou. The, yeah, sure. Even... Yeah. No, you can't just take my answer, <laughs> you son of a gun. Alice Walker. Sure, okay. This, this is the best part of the show. Where <laughs> this is so terrible. We, we should not be in this industry. What... what no, that's that's a horrible thing to say. Just because you don't know movie trivia, you shouldn't 
be making movies. Yes, that's part. That's partly what I'm saying. We should know some. We should know this collectively out of the three of us. What, 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 here's what we need to do. It's, quote it's, it's, of the it's night. Here, quote it's of the here. night. You here's don't have to know shit. <laughs> here's what we should do. <laughs> to be in the. We should make a list of movies that we can that we ask to, that we have to know everything about. Yeah. We'll split them up. That way, if we're ever asked a question, one of us can be like, that was the movie you were supposed to watch. Dr. Yeah. Zhivago, go. Yeah. Who directed it? But know. we always have to travel in a group then. Like, Stupid. It'll just be like five of us just moving around. So Good point. You have that one thing. You have this one chance. Come on. <laughs> yes, I know this one. Yeah, yeah. So have you seen this? No, no. You get particularly excited. The guy's like, Jesus Christ, guy. <laughs> just, I didn't care. I was making small talk. Yeah. No, no, ask me more about that one particular movie. <laughs> That's uh. the movie I know. Woo. Okay, go. All right. What singer debuted in a 1969 movie titled after his song Alice Restaurant? What singer debuted 1960s. in a 1969 movie titled after his song Alice Restaurant or Alice Restaurant. Alice's Restaurant? Yeah, Alice's Restaurant. 1969. Does do I get any points for the lyric? You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. I don't I mean, know. I feel like you should get a half point or something. Yeah, I'll take a half point. I mean, they still don't win. God damn it! This sounds like a dinosaur question. So yeah, 1969. Um, so, uh, the youngins won't get it. Like, I'm gonna say Bob Dylan. Buddy Holly. The face says it all. Yeah, Arlo Goot. Arlo Guthrie? Yeah. Okay, cool. You actually know this person? Well, I've heard the song. Ah. But huh. I, don't, I don't know the guy. Does that mean I won? Yeah, you won. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. I get a fist bump. Yeah. Mark doesn't give those away easily. No. Hey, he, he left me hanging. That's like a no-no. Yeah. Jesus. So, okay. it, do you have more questions for Mike? I do not. Just, uh, well, no. No, I, we, could, got, we could talk for a long time, I then suppose. Then we got one more question that we ask all the guests on our show, uh, which is... Uh, what are your three desert island movies? So you, you're gonna be marooned on a desert island. You obviously get a VCR and a TV player. VCR, uh, Blu-ray. Well, okay, Blu-ray, fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, you have power, but you're never leaving the island. And you have three Wait, movies. Wait, is this lost? Is this like on some lost shit on me? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And uh, three movies for the rest of your life, buddy. Okay, go. Three movies that I had to spend the rest of my life watching over and over, and I have to reenact. As, as, I mean, you, you don't, don't have, have to reenact re them. You don't have to reenact. But listen, one of them, like now that I think about it, mm -hmm. one of them should be a sexy pick. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. You need, yeah. you need. If you're by yourself on a desert island, listen, you need a little help. I don't want, I don't want you porn need, movies. I want real movies. No, so no, no. Are we talking, no, no. It okay. can just be a bit of sexiness in the movie. Oh. It doesn't have to be a porn movie. So are we talking? Okay, so let's. Let's, like, like my girl, let's, Macaulay Culkin. Let's get really, let's get really technical here. Box sets are allowed, or no, no, no box sets. It has to be a single. Yeah, you can't well, cheat. You, you didn't cheat. You have to specify. A box set is multiple movies. Well, it could be. I did it, say it, three it could, movies. It could be. Okay, I think I was pretty clear. It could be. It, You're just it, trying to bend it, the it rules could, here, yeah, you son be, of a you bitch. You have a DVD. It's like eight movies in one. You're like, oh, it's like <laughs> I'm gonna survive this easily. I go to hard drive with a thousand movies. Yeah. Yeah. No. Clearly. No. Come on. That's illegal, Michael. You shouldn't do that anymore. Uh, don't be ridiculous. This is a real scenario. Yeah. I, I don't know what I could. I have my favorites, but I don't know if I would if I would ever want to sit down and watch the same movie again and again because that would drive me stir crazy. Michael. Yes. Answer the damn question. I'm thinking. <sighs> answer the damn question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. One of them. You want a piece of paper? Carry the one. Yep, carry the one. <laughs> I think I can carry the one there, so I'm stuck with two. Um, Fight Club, definitely. Yeah. Good. Hands down. You have to, then I'd start Got a little looking, bit of sexiness. Looking for Easter eggs that entire time instead. Oh, Christ. Um, if I had to watch a movie over and over again, one that pops into my head for some odd reason right in this, right in this particular moment was Nocturnal Beasts. Cool. Have you seen? Yeah. Great movie. It's, out, it's really out there, and I, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's it's it. one of those. Jake Gyllenhaal. It's no, what? no, yeah, it is Amy, Jake Gyllenhaal. Amy Adams, Amy Adams play, and Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, Amy, Amy Adams sits in a bed for like half the movie doing yeah. nothing and being sad and depressed. So I did not watch it. I read the I read the script. Oh, it's 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 a it's a good. It's, it's out great. There. It it's was good. a really great script too. Um, and again, another movie that just out there, just throwing it out there. I could sit on a desert island all day, 
watching Amy Adams sit in the bed being depressed. It's 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 I a can get it's that. a very kind of polar opposite movie. So she lives in the real world, mm-hmm. and it's very depressing. And her ex boyfriend, I think he was, sends her a script for a, for a book that he wrote. Manuscript, yeah. And she's reading it, and in in this world, it's torturous and it's raw. And he plays a detective that's chasing these guys who killed his Just wife. Just don't spoil the movie for me. I'm not spoiling, but the, oh, those right. are the polar opposites mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to the universe. Um, and another one that kind of just, in the moment, uh, Big Lebowski. Amazing. Where's my money, Lebowski? <laughs> yeah, cause uh, you have to uh, laugh. Uh, do you know what That's I... what you get when you fuck a stranger in the ass, Larry. <laughs> my favorite part of that movie is where he goes to the guy. He's like, so you guys peed on my rug and I'm not the guy and can I have the rug? And the guy's like, what do you think this is? You think I did it? Da, da, da. And you could still hear the guy shouting behind him as he shuts the door and he says to the butler, yeah, he said I can take any rug <laughs> in the house. <laughs> and then the butler's like, oh, no problem then, I'll just wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> just genius, man. I, I love when, one around here? I love when the Jesus yep. is doing this with his bowling ball. <laughs> Washing his ball. <laughs> It's a good movie, man. So I was re- recently listening to a podcast, and uh, they had the writer of Fight Club. And uh, originally, he wrote this line. Oh, I heard that. I listened to that you're, podcast, you're, too. Where yeah. Marla says, uh, I can't yeah. wait to have your abortion. And uh, meaning talking to Tyler Durden. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was too much for the studio. Yeah. And they made him change it, and he changed it to... I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. And they were like, can you change it back? And uh, because the, the abortion line was in the book. And, uh, and uh, no, they went with... They, went with they were like, line. nope. Anyways. Is, isn't there, there... I think there's a rule like that. You can't... Say you abortion. Can, you can only change a line so many times. They did that with oh. South Park as well. Bigger, louder, and uncut. Mm-hmm. There's only so many times you're, you can be asked to change something in your movie. Mm. And that's how Trey that'd be Parker an interesting Matt's, rule to know. That's, that's, that's how Trey Parker and Matt Stone got around it because they had something else, and then they do something horrible. And then yeah, they change it and then they change it something slightly worse. Like okay, yeah, just change it back. Like yeah. we'll, we'll let we'll let the slide. All yeah. right, I believe in these rules. Yeah, I like it. this is crazy. They're the crazy crazy rules are out there. Very cool. All right, Mike, that was a fun episode. Um, we went double the double time fun. that we normally go now. Now we only do thirty minute episodes uh, to keep them short for our audience, but. You know, come on. If you have a guest, you gotta, you gotta run the gambit. You gotta, gotta spend let this, a little bit more time. We gotta right? let this guy chibba chibba jibba. Exactly. So, oh, 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 that's not, not the and and we mind. also come on. We have to figure out how to. I know. We need a little something, something underneath or there. Or we need to replace the table or something. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, thanks for everybody for watching. Thanks to you, Mike. You guys are the best. Thank you. If you if you're this far in, send us a message. Say hello. Tell yeah. us you love us. We love you too. Share the video. Follow I, us on YouTube. That's l- huge. Little shout out to my aunt, yes. my dad in South Africa, who I found out were listening. Yeah, yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. International audience. I love it. It's amazing. It's the best. I should I should cut my hair. Now that now that we now that we've gone international, I should probably trim this up. I want to know once you cut your hair. I want to know what what the deal is you made with <laughs> All right, yourself. Fair enough. That's going to be a whole podcast. Oh yeah. Okay. Everyone. Adios, muchachos. Dream big. Work hard. See. Mike, do you want to say something? About what? I don't know. We said dream big, work hard. And don't forget to bring a towel. <laughs> Very good. I like it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. First frames first. Yes. First frames first. Thank you, Jason. Welcome. If you enjoyed, head over to our website, www.thefableforest.com. Check out our films and sign up for our newsletter where we will send you exclusive content. Hit us up on our socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, always at The Fable Forest. And share our show with your friends. It'll really help us out a lot. Dream big. Work hard.